another episode of game of investing podcast 1000x or trillion dollar opportunities are rare but they do exist now i'm going to talk about a company that scripted success story in the world of technology especially cloud and hyperscalers and you might have guessed right yes i'm going to talk about amazon aws that had scripted the success story with their AWS cloud and hyperscaler business. In year 2006, they first released AWS services to the public and they were garnering around $100 million revenue in 2006. Now, four years later in 2010, if I had donned my investor hat and I'd looked at AWS revenues, it was closely close to $500 million, which means it had the revenue from AWS had scaled up almost 5x already in four years time frame. I would have not invested because I would have thought it's already a 4x or 5x and how much more. Now, maybe I would have invested it still in 2010, but definitely not in 2014 when it was already $10 billion. So a 20x increase. Now, I completely missed the AWS opportunity to invest in because, uh, you know, in 2015, 16, we were like thinking it's already big. It's already big. And we kept missing on that. And trust me, AWS in 2024 has a revenue run rate of $100 billion. That's a thousand X increase from 2006, 18 years back. So we completely, many of the people completely missed the AWS opportunity, a cloud opportunity specifically with AWS. Now I could have invested in many other cloud companies and benefited, but honestly, this was a tough one to crack. Now here is another opportunity, which is thousand X potential and a trillion dollar opportunity, which I'm going to talk about deep dive in today's episode, because as we all know, artificial intelligence is going through that growth curve and it is slowly climbing the wall of worry through the bull market. And there are a lot of capex and a lot of hype around AI, but then there is a lot of reality that is happening in the world of artificial intelligence. Now, I'm going to talk about how Amazon AWS, that is Amazon AI, not AWS, Amazon AI is poised to become another trillion dollar company. And what are the reasons I think Amazon AI as a company can stand out as a standalone company that can have potentially 28 to $30 billion revenue in the next three to four years? What are those factors? What makes Amazon stand out? Now, here is one important thing we need to understand. There could be many players in the world of AI right there is large language model creators like the microsoft open ai or facebook llama or mistral ai or hugging face or you know anthropic claude there are so many large language models that's getting created it all started with the advent from open ai with the advent of you know the chat gpt a couple of years back now if you see the large language models are becoming you know, just commoditized. There are so many companies, every company is launching their own large language models. Many will collapse, many will succeed. That doesn't matter for us. What I'm going to talk about is even the semiconductor industry might benefit immensely from the AI boom. I'm not denying that fact. I'm not negating that opportunity at all. But here is another parallel opportunity which is out there along with the semiconductors that is Amazon AI. And why do I think so? It's because you see a wide scale adoption of artificial intelligence is the only thing that can generate revenue for these companies and generate return on their invested capital towards AI. Because the amount of capex that Amazon, Facebook, Nvidia, Tesla are all making towards AI is in huge, humongous amount. It's like almost like $30 billion, $40 billion. The capex is so heavy, right? Every big Magnificent Seven or the fan companies are investing big time into AI. So starting with $1 billion, $100 million, all the way up to $50, $60 billion, even $100 billion from Meta, these CapEx needs to get a return on invested capital. Otherwise, shareholders will not, activist investors will not let these companies keep investing like this. Without seeing a return, without seeing a revenue flow, these companies are not going to continue their CapEx. So how is the revenue flow going to come? It is going to come through wide scale adoption. And if you notice AWS story, AWS became a behemoth. It became a trillion dollar opportunity, trillion dollar success story because of global enterprise wide scale adoption. 
across the globe, all the enterprises, most of the enterprises moved their platforms or workloads into cloud, whether it is AWS or Azure or Google or Alibaba, it doesn't matter. But end of the day, a wide scale enterprise adoption. What do you mean by enterprise adoption? All those companies out there that are developing applications, that's running applications, that's serving customers, the banks, the, the industrials, the, the healthcare sector, all of those companies out there has to start integrating these large language models and utilize these models or generative AI, whether it is through the chats, whether it is through the agents, whether it is through development of applications or deployment of workloads, whatever that is. The wide scale adoption across enterprises is the only thing that can help get or garner revenue return on invested capital for these companies. And who's the best placed out there to generate immense amount of return on invested capital that they're putting into AI? According to me, it's Amazon AI. To understand that, we need to first understand, <clears throat> to understand that we first really need to figure out how much revenue does Amazon makes from AI specific business? What is the scalability factor, right? Estimated projected growth. So in 2023, Amazon's AI revenue was $8 billion. It's already started, it garnered $8 billion from just the AI part of the business. End consumers like the Adidas, the Toyotas, the New York Stock Exchanges have already started using and consuming generative AI capabilities of Amazon. Now, the next 2024, it is expected to cross $18 billion. Look at the jump, $8 billion to $18 billion, that's more than 100%. The next year, 2025, it's projected to be $27 billion. The revenue just from Amazon AI specific business. In 2026, it could cross $35 billion. It is just following the path that AWS cloud business followed, right? Now, we need to understand why Amazon stands out from a point of technology and platform so that it has its competitive advantage, which is slowly and silently that Amazon is building on. What are those building blocks? The first one is Amazon Bedrock AI. The second one is Amazon Q. The third one is Anthropic Investments. The fourth one is Trainium and Inferentia Chips. And finally, though not directly related to AI, my final point is Amazon's humanoids. We'll get into each of them. First is Amazon Bedrock AI. We all know that AWS Cloud has 31 percentage market share when it comes to enterprise adoption. That includes infrastructure, software services, platforms, all of those products that is in and around adjunct of AWS, right? And the revenues is run rate of $100 billion, as I said. Today, enterprises spend close to $300 billion in towards their cloud investments, towards the cloud infrastructure building. This is what I'm talking about. $300 billion investments is made just in 2024 by enterprises. And it has scaled from nothing. That's just a few years back. Now, this is precisely what I'm talking about. A wide scale enterprise adoption is the only driver that can generate return on invested capital in generative AI for these companies. So for these behemoths and Amazon is right at the top. Now, as I said, 31 percentage market share is what AWS carry on their cloud business, which means 31 percentage of global enterprises are on AWS. Now, this is a definitive advantage because if you bring in AWS Bedrock AI platform. Now first understand what is Bedrock AI platform. You can see on the screen, the Bedrock is the easiest way to scale and adopt generative AI large language models out there. As I said, the large language models are gonna be commoditized. There are, there are at least 10 of them at this point. There could be hundreds of them in the future. It's a commoditized business, there is no advantage. So what Amazon did brilliantly is, they created a platform that can help enterprises adopt generative AI, you know, irrespective of whatever the large language model is. It's it's not it's indifferent to any large language model. It is not really dependent on a large language model. Any enterprise can that is existing on AWS cloud can leverage bedrock AI platform and scale their enterprises applications to adopt the large language models, whether it is Llama, whether it is Gemini, whether it is, you know, Anthropic Cloud, whichever you talk about, they are able to integrate easily, seamlessly. That's a beauty of such a platform, which is not existing with any of the other players out there. Now, well, tomorrow Microsoft can come up with such a platform. Obviously, they have Azure and they have a 25% market share in the cloud business. No, but 
Still, AWS or Amazon is a first mover in the Bedrock AI platform, just like they were the first mover in AWS. The second important thing is Amazon Q. Now, Amazon Q was a recently launched platform, which is primarily, it's, it's equivalent to the Microsoft Copilot. Now, Microsoft was a, you know, was first mover in terms of launching a chat or an agent that can help enterprises automate many of their customer servicing and code generation and all of that. Now, while Copilot exists, Amazon was immediately to launch Amazon Q. Now, Amazon Q has multiple functionalities and use cases. It has got Amazon Q business that can cater to the, you know, it is, it can provide, it can be an assist, assistant to many of these, uh, you know, queries and cust real time customer servicing for the businesses. Then there is Amazon Q developer, which helps, you know, the automatic code generation and the DevOps to great extent. Then there is Amazon quick site that is more into the business intelligence part than the reporting part. Then there is Amazon connect and AWS supply chain that can track and help with the supply chain management. So Amazon Q is going to be having a brilliant, a myriad of use cases that can fit into and especially in the customer relationship, supply chain, customer servicing, call centers, agents, operations, all of those factors, Amazon can Q can fit in. So while Bedrock can help integrate large language models and generative AI adoption, Amazon Q can fit into the use cases seamlessly. So that's the second part. AI chips, Amazon is not lagging there as well. They have their own custom made indigenous chips called Trainium and Inferentia. Uh, both of those chips, latest models and versions are continuously getting upgraded. The latest Inferentia chips is expected to have 10x lower latency and 4x more throughput because high processing is a given when it comes to AI and to scale. Now, Trainium and Inferentia are custom-made chips that can be utilized by enterprises. They can leverage those chips to run on AWS cloud or any cloud for that matter. The agnostic of the large language models as well to do the training and to benefit from the inferencing. As you know, generative AI has two components, right? The training, first you have to train the models and then reap the benefits because the inference part is more complex and requires more processing and less latency. So inference, inferentia and trainium is expected to grow at a compounded annual growth rate of 50% plus in the next three to five years. That is in terms of revenue and adoption. And it's expected to be roughly 10 to 15 percentage of generative AI revenue for Amazon. So Amazon's in-house chips is expected to garner anywhere between five to $10 billion revenue in the near future, like in the next three to four years, which can be close to 10 percentage of the Amazon AI revenue in the next three to four years. So it is gonna become huge. A uh, custom made chips, uh, being readily available with an AWS like cloud platform and a bedrock AI platform that can integrate any large language model with a lot of use case adoptions leveraging Amazon Q as an agent or like a co-pilot Amazon AI can be you know adopted by enterprises seamlessly you're getting my point, right? So all of them can come, come together seamlessly and help enterprises adopt the AI widely. Now this doesn't stop here because Amazon's investments in Anthropic was around $4 billion as of 2024 last and Anthropic is roughly valued at $18 billion or $16 billion as of today in the private market. So roughly 20-25% stake Amazon has and they could up their stake in Anthropic. Now why I brought this topic is Anthropic is another differentiator that Amazon did a wise investment into last year. Because Anthropic's large language models is the most powerful out there today. They have three large language models. You can see it on the screen. They have Claude, one, uh, Claude 3 and Claude 3 itself has three. That is Opus, uh, Sonnet and Haiku. They recently launched Claude 3 and Claude 3 is the fastest and most compact model and it has near real-time responsiveness and Claude will pro pro probably integrate with voice-based searches eventually, right? So Claude is the fastest. Claude has near real-time responses, more accurate responses with references. I'm not saying perplexity is anywhere far away. Perplexity is an equal competitor to Claude. Now, Claude 3 with a voice-based integration can be another lever that Amazon AI can generate revenue from. Under, assuming that AI 
uh, Amazon up their stake in Anthropic. They could potentially buy out Anthropic. Now, having said that, they still have the stake, which is important to understand. So they are not lacking on the voice based search, which is another lever for the scalability of generative AI. So we spoke about enterprise wide adoption, what competitive advantage Amazon has. Then we spoke about, you know, voice based search coming to media and advertising. Today, advertising is the fastest growth segment for Amazon because they they went into the ad supported tire of the prime video and they have started a, a hybrid model of streaming, which includes ad tire model and subscription based model, which just followed Netflix suite. Now, Prime has a scale advantage and Amazon e-commerce also is leveraging advertising business. So advertising is a big segment of Amazon's business. Amazon has a media presence. They are one of the leaders in the media segment through Prime, Prime Video, and they have advertising business. So the third leg, which is the media and advertising space adoption of generative AI and scaling and passing the benefit back to the users, whether it is consumers of e-commerce, merchants of e-commerce, right? Merchants or suppliers who are supplying to e-commerce, they're all going to benefit with the generative AI adoption. And the last segment is humanoids and productivity. Now, Amazon has been silently working on a humanoid robot out there in their warehouse in Seattle. And Amazon's humanoid, uh, basically, they did an inorganic way to reach there. Basically, they went and invested in a company called Agility Robotics, and they put their stake in that, just like they did with Anthropic. And they are uh, benefiting from the humanoids that Agility Robotics are developing because the latest one out there is called Digit. You know, it is a five foot nine humanoid that is already being deployed in Amazon warehouses to cater to the needs, operational needs like packaging, you know, shelving and all of that, shelving and all of that. And, you know, Amazon humanoids are going to be deployed roughly around 10,000 humanoids are going to be deployed in their warehouses to improve productivity and to scale uh, e-commerce beyond this. So uh, the expected rate cost for a humanoid is roughly $3 per hour as against much five six times more or four times more for a uh, human labor out there. I'm not saying they're going to replace human labors completely, but it is definitely going to enhance the productivity because humanoids can work 24 seven. There is no time limit. They can work, uh, you know, across different arenas of uh, operations, whether it is warehouse, supply chain, loading, unloading, packing, many other areas, right? So humanoids are going to become a big part of the productivity improvement for Amazon. And those operational leverage can really help Amazon reinvest the capex back into the AI business, whether it is a media, whether it is advertising, whether it is bedrock, whether it is anthropic, whether it is large language model. So, you know, Amazon is at the right juncture for scaling and becoming uh, Amazon AI, which is a trillion dollar company in itself. Now, today, AWS is a trillion dollar company. Amazon e-commerce is roughly trillion dollar company. The third trillion dollar can come from Amazon AI. And that is the, something that I wanted to discuss today and bring to the audience because most of us will still consider Amazon e-commerce and AWS. Not that many people will apply a mental model to think of Amazon building a third company, which is called Amazon AI, which could be a standalone in the future that can garner 30, 35 billion dollars in revenue, potentially 100 billion dollars in revenue and could potentially become a trillion dollar company. So there we are. We have come to the end of the episode. Trust this was helpful. Signing off from Game of Investing podcast, Sandeep Anand.